Hey, what is up guys, we're here, welcome back to Let's Play Test Drive Destruction And last time we left off, we got off pretty well, we won an EVE and we took very little damage to our car So that just placed us in a really good position for the next rest of the game So, this time around we are going to do another EVE and uh, I just noticed that we are reaching near 50 Which is a good and a bad thing, good thing because it means, we're gonna, which, uh, means that we're gonna need that need, uh, Jeez, can't speak today for some reason it means that we're gonna get a lot of money, which means a lot of cars, although it also means that we are going to start to get opponents with actually decent cars. This is not really like dangerous and all, because we still have a pretty good car for the time being. It's just that the Fillmore doesn't really have any angling and I'm, I'm afraid that it might like be bad <laughs> for the on. Although for the time being, we are in a good position and we're just gonna go and try to get as much money here so I don't have to grind later on to get a decent car. Although I don't feel I don't really mind grinding since in this game you can get a bunch of money real quick as long as you don't really lose your bets. Also, you're also gonna see me take these curves quite slowly because if I am right, last time I uh, played this, which was a few days ago, just for a heck of it, I kinda like crashed into every single wall there just because of the how sharp the curves was and the car had like had no aim lane. There's that curve I keep forgetting about, which you gotta be like... Eh, hey, jeez. I should really pay more attention to the game when less than commenting, but you know, choice of let's play. You're split 50-50 apart between the game and yourself. break real quick. This place has a lot of really freaking sharp curves and I don't really have a car for that. But anyways, we did it. Got a few reputation points which are going to be useful for unlocking new modes. Also, I'm thinking if I should actually do there, there which is a uh, arcade section which have a bunch of challenges and they're kind of cool. I might do them at some point. There's a few events there that I really, really like. Like the figure eight bus race. If you want to see massive carnage of bus just like T boning each other in the air, it's kind of like what you're gonna get. So, yeah, really fun stuff. And also, figure eight, regular figure eight race. We have kind of an advantage here because our car is fast and because there's no jump, handling is not that important in those kind of races. And link is mostly important when you have jumps because when you land, you really lose a lot of grip. So having a really bad uh, handling car can be quite bad. Also, one reason why I kind of like Gladiator more than the Rocket. Gladiator has uh, two handling more than the Rocket, although the Rocket has two speed more. So Gladiator is a bit more grippy in those figure eight races. So even though it's a less, it's it's a tad slower, it does get like better result in uh, jump race in figure eight jump races because of that. So you know. Again, preferences. It's kind of playing Forza if you ever played like a race sim. You could get the biggest engine, but if, the freaking if you don't have any uh, tires or any kind of downforce or any or any good suspension to like get the car to stay on the road, it doesn't really matter if you can go 200 uh, miles per hour in a straight line. And yes, if you notice, I say miles per hour. It's fun. Yeah. I'm kind. I'm kind of like. How could I say that? There's no word for that in English, but anyways, I use miles per hour a lot and horsepower a lot in the, uh, when I speak about when I talk about cars because in my childhood I kept playing like G, uh, Gran Turismo and all that, and the basic settings were in uh, miles per hour, not in kilometers per hour. So even though we use kilometers per hour here all the time, I don't have a clue how fast that is. I have a general idea, but I tend to use miles per hour for racing purposes because it tends to be. But uh, the most documentation is is uh, talking in, in uh, actual uh, metrics. I mean, I mean imperial. But when it comes to stupid stuff like calculating uh, surfaces and stuff like that, I don't have a clue about uh, about uh, foots and uh, inches because they're so weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird when you think about it. But anyways, not that much action in it happening in this uh, figure eight. To be quite frank, I. Tend to say that uh, figure eights are kind of a bit, uh, 
kind of they're cool, but I can't say to you that the actual uh, jump races are a bit better because of uh, the jump. It makes stuff a little bit more indodgeable. But you can't really turn in midair. Let's see next the gauntlet. Oh, gauntlet. If I'm right, that's a quite a physical one. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's like one of my favorite, favorite event ever. You drive the freaking hearse is just I believe that's a hearse. I think it is. That car is just such a awesome car to drive. It has so much resilience, so much just everything. It's so good. And also so fun to smack those guys that are helplessly trying to stop you. Of course you take damage from doing that, but sometimes you gotta ram them because it's better than just like letting them ram you. Plus, if you can damage their cars later on the events, they're gonna be quite damaged. You're gonna be able to take them out quite easily. Computers, for some reason, don't repair their cars. I find it quite weird. Like, being a player in, the, in this game gives you so many advantages when it comes to durability. Of course, computers don't have to play, like, buy cars, pick cars, all that stuff, but you get to have more than one car, and you get to repair it between rounds, so... Kind of like the player cheat. Cheat. But to be quite frank, if you were starting a computer, it would be kind of boring since uh, you can get some pretty, pretty heavy damage. Although I guess it would be kind of more fair. What I got, my god. That guy just bit it. I freaking love that car. It almost hit like a bus, but it's just so much faster. The bus in this game is so slow, it's ridiculous. It does, it's kind of capable, it's capable of like, pretty much when killing everything you hit, but it's so slow that, that, that trying to hit something with it is kind of difficult. Although, don't worry, we'll get to try it at some point. Sadly, the figure eight uh, bus race is only a dare mission because there's no actual event like that. The only actual event in the bus is basically races, races in circles. Nice. Holy cow, these guys are gonna be down. The more we kill here, the more money we make, and also the more money we make, the more... Uh... I wonder if they respawn though, that's a question. They do take, they do keep the damage, but do they respawn? Because if they don't, that's quite a lot of cars that are just out of the track. Jeez, that's gonna be a lot of money. Free kills. Jeez. I wonder. Okay, so we're 10. Let's see. Red Rover. Oh, that was fun. And I'm also really wondering about the feel more in this one. The Coyote is bad for racing, but the Red Rover is kind of very difficult in the car. But hey, you know, that's part of the fun, you know? <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think they do respawn, although, as you can see, some of them are quite damaged. I think it might be a good tactic to just, like, leave them alive so they just are weakened. Also, let's try to avoid these guys, because these guys will try to, uh, ram us. Peters are kind of a dick like that. Holy god, their car is so slow. Hey! One down. This particular event of Red Rover just becomes so chaotic with the, the actual uh, A-bell in the, in the middle. Let's say behind the box, just in case. So it just Come on, even when I'm behind the box, it just uh, smacked me. Like I said, I should probably have picked the Coyote for this one. The Fillmore is kind of sturdy, but it's not sturdy enough to withstand a Red Rover. Uh, let's see. Let's try to be as careful as possible. I don't want to know anybody like slamming into me again. I'm like, look, I'm so paranoid. I'm looking at my radar non-stop. See if there's any white dot trying to uh, sneak around and just... Tried to kill my car. Don't feel like having to repair that thing from 
scratch. Come on. That guy just got animated. Let's see. Let's do this. If we can keep away from the cars, this should be a pretty easy win. So, okay. So at this point, I don't think we're we're gonna be killed by computers. So we we'll have to be. We'll be gonna be able to relax a little bit. So as soon as this guy's in, it, let's do this. And get out the easy victory. If you're second on the last, uh, actual, the actual uh, last uh, back and forth, you're pretty much doomed unless you were really close to the other one, because the other one's already turned around and you have to turn around and beat them. So unless you have a really fast car, you can't really do anything. Let's see. Uh, how do I repair my car again? I don't. I never actually remember. Race, race, race. Okay, here. Let's see how much money is gonna cost us. It's expensive. Is it worth it? Let's let's stitch a hundred dollars on it. This is pretty much a gamble at this point because I this could have been doomed, to be quite frank to you. Quite frank, but on the other end, this also could have mean ab uh, about like fifty dollars uh, saved, which is about what this uh, event's gonna pay us. Because you do get money for uh, for uh, eventual, even the, geez, for a single races, and you get money for the, for the eve together. So I don't feel like paying uh, of dropping like three hundred dollars and then like losing the race. So I've been like kind of losing the gamble. Okay, let's do this. As you can see, what I mean by the fact that, like, when I talked about the handling, when you have a car that has really low handling, when you, like, land the jump here, it's really hard to get back on it, and you, t you usually, like, have curves that are a lot wider than they should be just because you have low end uh, lower handling. So, this is why on the on jumpers like that, having low handling is kind of the advantage. So it means it's really harder to react to any debris in the track and bad positioning upon the jump. We could, I don't think we're gonna be able to win this, sadly. The car, like I said, it's hard to uh, stand the track of that thing. Also, the car in front of us is a prince, I believe. And that's a pretty nimble car. But I'm okay with second, to be honest, as long as we win the Eve and as long as I get enough money to pay what I uh, purchase in terms of repair, I'm alright. Because that means profit. Besides, when you get so much money for the kills, that it's gonna be okay. No matter what happened. Oh god! <laughs> I love those. They're bad for winning, but they're entertaining as freak. Oh god. Yeah, they're bad. Come on. Oh no, you're not I'm not finishing fifth. You get out. So that was a kill too. I guess my repair was paid. Of course, I mean we're not gonna win the race now, but at least the repair was paid. In a in a quite spectacular way. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Another kill. Cool. And the Demotion Derby. Let's see the settings. We are winning by quite a bit. So even though we, we could pretty much lose a derby as long as we're not finished last, we're going to be okay. So let's do this. Coyote, you're up. My good old derby friend pals shenanigan. Let's teach them a lesson of how low tier car can still be extremely effective in a derby. Also, I should probably think about changing Coyote eventually because it is starting to be quite damaged permanently. It still has a, a few fights in it, but uh, just like the Fillmore, it's starting to. Uh, 
go down. Probably gonna switch it un until like it's uh, like 50 uh, 50 percent uh, unrepairable. But it's it's becoming slow too. So again, I'm like I don't know. I think I didn't know if it was dead or not. There was no smoke, but it was in the battle. There you go, another one. Come on, guys. Fear me. That was bad. Still hit it. You are going to the wall. And you are so. Ah, oh, come on. That is bad. Ouch. Perma damage for the coyote. Checked. The good thing about driving an like, actual derby car like Coyote is that you, do, even if you do take burn damage, it's not like your your the car is valuable or anything. So you can just mash it and not have to worry about it. Because they're usually cheap to bear. That guy just got punk. Come on, get out. I have people to squash. Like that guy. And there you go. Uh, you like my rear end? A lot, I hope. Because that's what you're about to... Uh... No, not really, but... Anyways, you're dead. See ya! I love that red brick. Whatever you throw at him, it, at it, it just... Stands there and take it. God, that's a lot of money. All right. Before we go, let's actually see if uh, any betting would be wise. And uh, Noah would not like to save my game. I'm sorry, but I do not want to um, screw the let's play if the part does not record properly. Let's see. Probably should have like picked the film more and repaired it. <laughs> But I don't really care, I just want to see the cars. If there's anything, I'll just do the trip again. Although, yeah, I've probably been a bit more... Uh, I, mean, I mean, a bit faster if I actually picked the right car to begin with. Let's go. Okay, so let's see. There's an Outlaw, which is a very good der uh, demolition derby car, but... It's so expensive that's not really worth it. There's an Empire, which would be a, a fair upgrade uh, over ours. It is as fast, but it has some actual handling. I mean, just look at the difference. Although, I don't think it's worth trading in the Fillmore as uh, right now because it's not that much of an upgrade and it's quite expensive. I think we're gonna be driving the Fillmore for one last Eve before changing. Also, we're also going to be repairing those uh, those cars because, you know, there's no point in not doing so. Besides, like I said, you don't really lose any money if you, like, repair it slash not repair it when you sell a car, so you might as well do it. There's no point not to when you're at home. In a heave, don't repair them because they're expensive, but at home, always repair your cars. I mean, there's no point not not so. And it happened to me, like, one time where I went to an heave without, without a repairing my car and it just like was bad don't do that because you can forget about it and also that's one of the reason why I probably won't get rid of Coyote for a while it is so inexpensive to repair it's ridiculous compared to just look at the Fillmore we're gonna we're gonna repair the Fillmore just look at it